What's up everybody, War here. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're doing another leveling build for Necromancer. Today we're bringing you Blood Surge. Okay, we're doing a Blood Surge, no minion, necro leveling build, 1 to 50. And actually, just from the brief testing that we have been doing with this, this is actually a really, really fun build and kind of like surprising at how much damage that you actually do. However, it is going to involve corpses and you're going to have to be on a really nice rotation. But I'm going to show you how to do that and how powerful that this build actually is and again you're not going to need any crazy powers you just need codexes so let's go into the abilities and break down everything that you need for the build so we're going to be doing reap okay reap is going to be our essence generator into acolytes reap because soon as we hit the very first enemy we're going to get a corpse this is what's going to set this entire thing off we're going to hit reap and then we're going to be able to go through our rotation which i'll talk about in a second so we're going Reap. It has really nice range on it too. Down into Blood Surge. We're going to draw blood from enemies, dealing a crap ton of damage. And we're going to go into Paranormal Blood Surge because this is going to be kind of like an overpowered Necromancer build, which just seems really, really cool, which you don't see often with Necro. But Blood Surge into Paranormal Blood Surge for the overpower. Then we're taking Hued Flesh. We have a chance on all of our damage on a lucky hit to create a corpse. Then we got down to our corpse and big time skills here. We're going blood mist into ghastly blood mist. So that way when we get crowd controlled or we almost die, it creates a corpse for us, which will allow us to go through our rotation again. Then we have corpse explosion into blighted corpse explosion. This is just going to be a dot a damage over time uh, for six seconds, which is just is going to help us reset our rotation as well as give us back our essence for the build. We got three points into grim harvest and fueled by death. Uh, Grim Harvest is going to give us our essence back. And Fuel by Death is going to give us more damage after consuming a corpse. Nothing into curse skills. However, we're taking Death's Embrace. More damage against close enemies and, and we take less damage. And then three into Death's Reach for distant damage, which is really cool. Then we're going to come down to corpse and even more corpse skills. We're taking corpse tendrils into plague corpse tendrils. Plague or corpse tendrils, I should say, is the main piece to this build. This is what's going to allow us to not only fuel our rotation but do huge amounts of damage so we're going to corpse tendril it's going to make people slowed and vulnerable and we're going to get a massive crit bonus out of this okay now we're going to go in we're going to take a lot of blood skills almost all of them in fact except for the one that doesn't give us um blood orbs that heal minions because we're doing no minions in this build <clears throat> so one point into gruesome mending uh, which is just going to give us access to the other three which is three points into each while we're healthy we'll deal more damage with our blood skills uh, ties of blood gives us more damage and overpower damage is the damage is double to 30% when we're healthy, which healthy is over 85% uh, percent of your health, which should be really good. And then we have drain vitality hitting enemies fortifies us. This is going to help us stay healthy. Then we're going to come down into our ultimates. We're going to take bone storm again, guys. We're taking born storm into Supreme for more crit chance as well as damage reduction or a debuff against the enemies. The reason that we're taking bone storm is against single targets, elites, if we really have to, and then bosses. Okay. Because we're running no minions, this is what's going to help us kind of combat our single target issue. Then we're taking three points in the standalone for increased damage reduction uh, for no minions. And then memento Mori for sacrificing both skeletal warriors and mages increases their sacrifice bonus by 60%. Then for our key passive guys, we're taking Wrath of Vigor. Vigor increases our max life by 10% after we've been healthy for 15 seconds. Our next blood skill overpowers. So this is going to be a medium range, medium to close range build. Um, and we're going to apply a lot of overpower damage, which is going to be really fun. Into our Book of the Dead, we've sacrificed everything. Sacrifice Skirmishers for increased crit chance. Sacrifice Skeletal Mages for in increased vulnerable damage. Uh, however, you could maybe swap this out if you really wanted to for the overpower, which I think would be better. Uh, but we can no longer raise. We're not really necessarily making things vulnerable with, except for with corpse centrals. But the overpower damage would actually be really, really nice. But I like the cold one because it's just we're always going to make people vulnerable. So there's that. And then Golem's Iron is always the best for increased critical strike damage. So those are that. We'll get into the abilities after the, the gameplay. Let's show you guys how it works. So this is the rotation. You're going to reap, create a corpse, corpse tendrils to pull everything together, and then blood surge. Again, single targets or big elites. Pop bone storm. We have blood, uh, blood mist to get out of hairy situations. Once you've done your blood mist 
or excuse me, your blood surge. You can use Corpse Explosion to get all your stuff back. So boom, bring them all in. Blow them up. All dead. Get your essence back. Destroy. Very simple rotation. Very, very fun. I actually am so surprised at how fluid the build works after you start to understand the rotation. It's actually really, really cool. So we're going to kind of build up a big mob here, right? Come back, come back, come back. We got a corpse back here. Come on back. Corpse. Ooh, I did the wrong one. Get the tendrils in here. Pull them all in. Boom. We just crit it for 11,000 and 9,000 of overpower damage. Super, super cool. Even with no minions. All right, sweet. We got an elite. Let's, uh, oh, I did it wrong again. I'm pressing the wrong button, guys. Pull them in. Pull them all up. Pull them all up. Pull them all in again. Oh, man, this build is fun. So you have Corpse Explosion for your in-between until the cooldown of Corpse Tendrils comes down. But it should be a pretty easy rotation through them. Uh, you're going to save Bone Spear for the absolute end, right? Let's grab that, bring them all in, and they're all dead. Super, super fun, super easy. I was maybe hoping that the uh, Butcher would show up, which would be sweet. And then they just all die. Super, super fun, man. This is a really cool build. Really fun build. And then you have Course Explosion just to go in between. Right? You're still overpowering for a lot. Boom. Just dead. We don't even need channeling. That's how good we are. God gamer. Okay. Uh, let's wait for Corpse Tendrils to come back. Boom. Get us in there. And we're going to pop Bone Spear against the single target. Drain him down. Boom. Debuff. And then he's dead. So against single targets, it's not that bad, guys. As you guys can see, it's it's really not that bad. Boom, bring everything in. So that is the Blood Surge. I actually really like this, even more so than Bone Spear. So let's get into the gear, guys. Everything, again, from 1 to 50 is going to be your codexes. And there's two main ones that you need, and all the rest are going to be really good support. So we have um, the Helm of the Might. So the Might uh, Codex gives us damage reduction with basic skills. Then we have, oh, Disobedience for more armor when we deal any form of damage, which is great. Then we have Attacking Enemies with uh, Basic Skills increases the damage of your next core skill, which is awesome with Reap. Then we come down and we have Critical Strikes give us 8% increased move speed for every second up to 6. Then our main one that we're going to have is Blood Bathe. Uh, Blood Surges Nova echoes a second time after a short delay, dealing less damage, so it triggers a second time, which is really, really cool. Towards the end game, there's going to be a legendary that you can get where your minions do this, and we're going to kind of shift the build, but that will be in a different video. Then we have uh, the Necklace of the Grasping Veins. This is the second main one that you need. This is going to be for our Corpse Tendrils. We gain a 15% increased Critical Strike chance for 6 seconds after we cast, and we deal 45% uh, percent increased bonus Crit Strike damage to those that have been uh, corpse tendrils, huge. Then we have basic attacks gain 15% uh, more attack speed. And then Ring of the Umbral, which is, just gives us more resource when we crowd control, which is going to be from our corpse tendrils. So the build is actually really, really fun, guys. You can operate this just on two. You don't need all the extra ones. But the build is really, really fun, especially for not having no minions. And I actually like it a lot more than Bone Spear. It seems a little bit more fluid than Bone Spear, and just the rotation just seems uh, pretty smooth. So that is the Blood Surge Necromancer leveling for 1 to 50. Make sure to like the video. Comment down below what you guys think about it. Let me know. And then make sure to subscribe if you guys are new. And as always, stay gaming. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.